The question was, did we go into the project with a particular point of view about the story and did it change throughout the course of, of making the film? Why don't you tell about how, we, how, how this all came about? It's your box. Oh, um, I guess in, um, in eighth grade Louisiana history um, is when my family told me that my great uncle supposedly shot Huey Long and I was never allowed to bring it up at the dinner table. And so I did my report on, the, you had to pick something in Louisiana to do a report on, and you can do like Zaps, potato chips, and I chose Huey Long. And so um, that's what everybody does the Zaps, because you get the free box of Zap chips. Um, so I chose that, and my grandmother, Ida, uh, handed me a box of articles. I mean, you just didn't speak about it. Um, and I pulled those articles and I went in thinking that he did it and I just I noticed as an eighth grader that something didn't add up it just wasn't making any sense with the bullets and the testimonies there's just all this lack of stuff so I've just been fascinated with the subject ever since and so David and I went to school together and I, I came to him and he had just made a political documentary um, Crawford and so I, I asked him about it and he his first thing was now, if we discover that he did it, are you going to be okay with that? And I said, absolutely. It's just the question. It's still such an open question, and we just I'm just very curious about it. And I think for me, oh, no, I was just going to, I mean, for, for me, I think I, I didn't have necessarily, you know, a, an opinion. I think we went back and forth many, many times. We started this project in 2009, um, and we went back and forth many times, uh, and I think ultimately became more interested or more when we realized that there was going to be no who done it there's no, there's not going to be a payoff uh in the film that became clear that it was more about these families uh seeking closure and what that emotional journey is like and if you care about them then you care about the history um and that the film became more about sort of how history is is written um and that you know we all uh, maybe everybody's had the experience of, of you read something in the in the paper, you see something in the news that you actually know something personally about, and you probably see three or four errors or things that are wrong with that, and you're like, that's they got that wrong and that wrong, and then, but I anyway then go back the next day and and continue to take everything I read at face value, and I think that I think we hope with the with the film that there's this sense of um, questioning where these stories uh, come from and how they sort of come to be made and leaving the question open I think is um, kind of where we've ended up as far as de definitive public opinion I think it's it's hard to say and, and in some ways I, I try when we were in New Orleans and we just jump in a cab I would just ask the cab driver like what who, who do you think killed Huey Long and you, you literally hear a lot of different theories so the, I mean this is sort of the you know in it to to the heart of it but a lot of people will say that Standard Oil killed Huey Long because he was fighting back against them as a monopoly a lot of people believe that Roosevelt who he was going to run against in the 36 election from the left and who ha he had created a whole host of issues for in DC actually sent somebody down and then that's why there was no federal investigation so there are there are many 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 theories and you you will hear them all I, I, I can't quite imagine you know the uh, the opinion polls um, but it's fascinating how much power those tour guides have at the Louisiana State Capitol because every seventh grader including these guys that are 70 years old have been on that tour um, and we asked her where she got her information and she said she watched a training video which we tried to get our hands on because we thought that would be good to cut in but you know it's who knows the the people that believe that Weiss wasn't armed when he went into the Capitol believe uh, that the bodyguards or the state police went into his car which was parked in at the state capitol and into his glove compartment his his brother later testified that the car was the doors were open and the glove compartment was open things were kind of thrown around everywhere they basically took the gun out and then planted on him you you hear somebody describing sort of it's not in the crime scene picture and it's planted other you know elsewhere you see uh don morrow from louisiana state police 
police that believes that the existing, you know, uh, that Weiss did shoot long or there's no reason to overturn it. And he at that symposium held up his car keys and said, my car is here at the state capitol too. Can anybody go find it? So, you know, depends where you fall out. Carl's keys were not on his body at the, um, at the crime scene. So um, Ida recollects that someone had to go, her brothers had to go back to the house or his father's house because I think it was his father's car and get the keys, a spare set. Thank you guys all for, Thank you all for coming. coming. Yeah.